Persian mythology is made of traditional tales and stories of ancient origin, all involving extraordinary or supernatural beings. Maybe the Nephilim are genetic hybrids from the legendary past of Iran. They reflect the attitudes of the society, of which first belonged to attitudes towards the confrontation of good and evil. The actions of the gods, Yazats the lesser gods, and the exploits of heroes and fabulous creatures. Cyrus the Great aka Thoth was named King of Kings, King of Persia, King of Anshan, King of Media, King of Babylon, King of Sumer and Akkad, King of the Four Corners of the World also known as Thoth the Atalantan king who in Egypt fathered the alien-like pharaoh of Aten Cyrus when he reconquered Babylonia he retained the king as a satrap or provincial governor. He also freed the Jewish slaves there and helped them return to their homeland and rebuild their temples. Cyrus aka Thoth was first the king of the Atlanteans then the king of Sumer so it makes sense while he's been busy expanding the empire. That his governors were not being governed themselves hence the need for the empire charter of the rights of nations which states. Now that I put the crown of the kingdom of Iran Babylon and the nations of the four directions on the head with help of Ahura Mazda. I announce that I will respect the traditions customs and religions of my empire and never let any of my governors and subordinates look down on or insult them until I am alive aka until his return as Thoth is said to have discovered the secret to immortality. Maybe he is in stasis or he knew how to be reborn with memory intact as he was said to be the most intelligent being to ever live. One thing is certain which is he knew exactly how to control a population and his kingdoms. He was an alchemist and the emerald tablets of Thoth are atomically fixed, meaning indestructible, which more than prove his capability. Also known as the Illuminated One and as he has many names and my research suggests he was first king of Atlantis from 64,000 BC to 32, as Ahura Mazda is described as the creator and upholder of Asha. He is a supporter and guardian of justice and the friend of the just man or so they were led to believe. This charter is simply a control mechanism to subdue infighting of his subjects, or as he called man, his property. Ahura Mazda is described as the highest spirit of worship in Zoroastrianism, along with being the first and most frequently invoked spirit in the Yasna. The literal meaning of the word Ahura is mighty or lord and Mazda is wisdom. There are no representations of Ahura Mazda other than the custom for every emperor to have an empty chariot drawn by white horses. Sounds familiar doesn't it? For instance, he rode a pale white horse. He had not yet been given the name uncreated spirit. Thoth is said to have defied the all, which would interpret as God to modern man or the creator. My research in this matter is taking me down a road where I don't think anybody has yet dared to travel, as I can't help but feel him tracing the footprints or bloodline of the Antichrist or the Devil himself. Through my research so far I have traced Thoth, Sargon, Dagon, Thutmose, and Cyrus and they seem to be and it is evident they are the same entity. Cyrus. Thoth the king issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the temple the place where sacrifices are offered be rebuilt. Which is concerning when you know that Baal was the God. In which human and animal sacrifices are made. And Baal worship still goes on today why governments were trying to erect 1,000 of these temples worldwide in 2016 just as a tribute, can only be described as sinister. As Thoth laid his seed in Egypt bearing Aten Aken, so he did in Persia. 
His grandson is somebody you may be familiar with Xexas. The giant Persian king in the movie 300. And the influence of Thoth is evident. And accessible in every culture my presentations have touched